Hello and welcome to another fat day. We're approaching the last quarter of the year and now, ladies, is not the time to slow it down here at NAPW. We're still moving and shaking and growing. I know I sound like a broken record, but once again, our e-chapter just keeps growing and growing. We started in 2017 with more than 23,000 e-chapter members, and now we have over 30,500 e-chapter members. It's by far our most successful and member-appreciated networking benefit, and I think it's pretty amazing. I'm absolutely thrilled to witness the explosive growth of this exciting initiative, and I thank each and every one of you for making our bi-weekly virtual meetings engaging, heartfelt, and inspiring. The NAPW e-chapter is networking at its best, and for busy professional women on the go, it really does provide access to your network from wherever you are. In fact, as most of you know, last year I hosted the e-chapter from multiple places while meeting all kinds of people in some amazing spaces. In 2017, or 2016, ladies, nothing stopped me from keeping my network strong, and 2017 has proven to be even better. This is a really extra special e-chapter today, as I'm coming to you from the 2017 Women's Forum Global Meeting in Paris, France. Yes, I am sitting right here in Paris right now. This is where we're going to launch our brand new International Association of Women, IAW, our brand globally. In fact, I'm hosting a luncheon for that first group. I want you to see what the tables look like right here. Of course, stop and take time to keep up with my NAPW girls. In in fact, they're going to be greeted with their brand new IAW identification bags. It's going to be great. I'm going to have so much more to share with you in the coming weeks. A president and a member of the programming committee of the Women's Forum Global Meeting, I will bring with me one of the largest country delegations outside of European countries with approximately 20 delegates from China here in attendance. This event is just amazing. The Women's Forum for the Economy and Society is the world's leading platform featuring women's voices on major social and economic issues. In 2017, Women's Forum Global Meeting will be held October 5th and 6th um, in Paris with an anticipated 70 countries representing or represented by over 2,000 delegates. Yes, ladies, it's this huge. As president of IPDN, I will be a featured speaker at the WFGM 2017, presenting a workshop with other leaders from across the globe on creating impacts through women's network. I think we know a little something about that. And I'm also leading one of the premier plenary sessions on how businesses can be more human. I'm so proud to represent you every time I am out and about with women's organizations representing what NAPW stands for, success. That's what we're about. As I promised you in the beginning of the year, this is the year that we're going to soar as an organization. Everyone at NAPW knows that it has always been my goal to make our organization a global networking organization for professional women to aspire, connect, and achieve. And I'm so proud that I'm seeing these goals come to fruition, which is perfect for today's e-chapter. Today we're going to discuss progress and goal setting. Think about that for a minute. I think it's fair to say I have personally worn and continue to wear many hats. I know a thing or two about judging, uh, judging and judging, basically juggling different goals, projects, and opportunities. This is the time of year where a lot of professionals, they get a little nervous. Maybe you're nowhere near reaching your 2017 goals. Perhaps you're not on track to meet the year's fiscal quotas, or as all of us can relate, maybe your to-do list get overwhelmed. or give up on your goals. Now is the time to grit your teeth and not only grind, but work smarter, not harder. This year is not over yet. Push through it. And here's how I reach my goals and get it done every single time. First of all, I want you to take baby steps. That's number one. Listen, I have no doubt that you are smart enough and bold enough to move mountains, but you don't have to do it today. You don't have to do it all at one time. When you have goals, Regardless of their size, first create a blueprint of everything you need to do to reach these goals. 
then break these details up and decide which day, week, or month you will complete those specific tasks. Each baby step you take will bring you one step closer to achieving the big picture. Number two, delegate. Leaders delegate. It is as simple as that. You must know when to ask for help. Place. Make your business, no, make it your business to be a good communicator so that your team knows exactly what they need to do to help you reach your goals. Okay, number three is time management. Many times the media or others will ask me to chime in on the latest pop culture gossip or social media trend, and I'm always lost on the latest he said, she said, because you know I'm not keeping up with that. We're all busy. When you have uh, personal and professional goals of your own to reach, you don't have time to keep up with the Kardashians, if you know what I mean. It is so easy to get distracted with futile things. Even do not need to respond to every email or accept every call. Remember, you are only, um, you're the only one, I should say, with the power to stretch yourself thin. So don't let anybody do it for you. Tunnel vision is your friend sometimes and ignore the little distractions that will inevitably get in your way. Number four, savor your success. You know, as women who do it all, we can burn out easily. No, we know it. With all the pressures constantly weighing on us, it is important to pause and reflect on our success. Being able to acknowledge what we have done right so far and celebrate the milestones we have achieved is absolutely important. When you savor your success, you're providing momentum and boosting your own morale. And because of your confidence, you will not grow weary in well-doing, if you know what I mean. Ladies, this is how I reach my goals. Regardless of how small or large my goal is, staying organized and focused wins with me every time. Again, I'm encouraging you to not get overwhelmed at your own list of goals and continue to take it all at one time, one day at a time. Continuously remind yourself that you cannot do it all but you can do something today. And today you're in good hands. I have some awesome women who are very best at what they do and they're ready to pour it into you. So I hope you're excited. Enjoy today's Each After Meeting and may you be inspired to live your very best life. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Or as we say, au revoir from Paris. Au revoir star and thank you. Welcome everyone. Our live e-chapters are held once a month and our replays held bi-weekly, either at noon or 4 p.m. Eastern. So you can come back, listen again, and live network with new attendees from around the country. E-chapter has taken the stage, not only fostering real-time networking, but has also developed into offline, in-person connections and business contacts. We also hope you are taking an advantage of another extremely popular NAPW online event, eCoaching, which offers exclusive coaching on relevant topics from an NAPW expert and even more networking opportunities. Please look out for the invites and promotions via email, on social media, and on our website, napw.com. We encourage you to carve out the time and keep coming back to our online events because of the ease and ability to network from your office, while on the road, and even from the comfort of your own home. In the chat room with you today are some additional corporate moderators to assist you or just chat with you along the way. They are Samantha Pocorny, Program and Engagement Manager, who will do her best to offer technical support if needed. Our local chapter representative, Alyssa Ramos, Miami chapter president and Eastern regional manager, Ruth Garcia, Los Angeles chapter president and Western regional manager are available to answer any local chapter related questions you may have. During our panel discussion today, you will see several times a poll pop up on your screen during our discussion. So please take a minute to answer the question as we will share your input. It's time now to introduce you to our NAPW panel that will be sharing their insight on our topic for today. Understanding how to leverage small wins 
and reach your goals. Megan Cherie McFall is the owner and operator of Megan Cherie LLC. She has a BS in culinary arts and food service management, personal financial management, and small business finance from Utah State University. She moved into the channel commerce industry where she knew she was making a difference in people's lives. Megan found a new passion for life that had been lost years ago and is now a proud owner and operator of Megan Cherie LLC. She also partnered with Avise and The Boss. Megan's mission is to empower people across the globe to become more in every dimension of their lives, physically, emotionally, financially, and spiritually through a proven framework of leadership, education, coaching, and mentorship. Hey, Megan, thanks for joining us today. Luella Thank you. is the CEO and founder of Sisters with Inc. Foundation, as well as an award-winning author of four books. She has been a certified nursing assistant for 20 years with Alzheimer's and dementia patients, along with being a member of the East Bay Women's Network and the Vallejo Community Access Television. She is also a theatrical poetess, TV and internet radio show host, and has contributed profound work in artist development, along with mentoring new and upcoming artists. Luella, thank you so much for joining us today. And Stephanie McCannon could not make it with us today because you know as women, whatever can come up will come up and she chose family first and we appreciate her and look forward to seeing her on an upcoming E-Chapter event. So ladies, let's get right down to it. I saw this quote, if you haven't felt like quitting, your goals aren't big enough. Sounds powerful, but actually reaching your goals can feel overwhelming and often hinder the results you desire. What suggestions do you have on how to manage feeling overwhelmed? Megan, we'll start with you. Awesome. This uh, this quote can take be taken, or this information be taken in so many different areas, but I want to go back to the quote. Um, I am surprised as I work with so many different people, not just women, but men as well, that um, they haven't taken the time to really write down their goals and their dreams and the direction where they really want things to go and really get detailed to set the priorities. For me, I had to learn how to set priorities in my life and actually how to tell people no um, to combat that overwhelm um, and to be able to, when I set my schedule, to, to set the priorities. You know, we've all heard the, the big rock scenario where we put our big rocks in and then the little rocks and then the sand and the water to fill in the, the, the extra gaps. Um, and we do that so that when we are working, um, on the different areas of our life, we can really tune into those areas. So for example, when we are at work, we can focus on work and not feel guilty because we're not with our kids. And then when we're with our kids and, and doing things with them, we can be really tuned into them and not feel guilty because we are not with uh, we're not working on work we've actually scheduled that stuff in and we can we can prioritize it it's going back to like for example if we look at at television they know their mission they know their goals like if we're tuned into the golf channel they're they're on golf they they only show golf if we're tuned into the home improvement channel they only show home improvement they don't show criminal investigation or anything like that. They know their mission, they know their goals. And so when it goes back to that, we want to really make sure that we know what our priorities are. And when we schedule in those times, we put our priorities in first. And so um, when we get down to that stuff that I call it the fluff stuff, the sand and the water items, um, and those don't get done, then 
we've met, we we don't have to worry about that. For example, I started a YouTube series down back in June that I still haven't finished because it's not a priority. It's not one of those those things that I set as a priority and I'll get it done eventually, but it's okay and I don't have to feel guilty because it didn't get done because my priorities are getting done and we really need to make sure that we're focusing on that. Why is the dream so important? A lot of people ask me, why is it so important that I focus on that? Because that is the thing, that is the prize at the end of all of the work and that will help push us forward and really help us manage the overwhelm because us as women we're getting pulled into 100 different directions and we have to really honestly manage our time just like star said we're we are the masters of time management households ourselves offices businesses whatever we are doing um and we can get overwhelmed really definitely but life is going to happen and so when we have that prize that big dream whether it is a huge dream or something our family is working on ultimately that prize at the end of the tunnel is going to make pushing through all of that and getting through the obstacles so worth it. Um, but making sure we're setting those priorities and telling people no when we don't have the opportunity to do that or it's going to distract us. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, and saying no is absolutely important. Uh, you saw the poll question, number one came up, plan, do, check, and adjust is used regularly to direct business goals and adjust direction. How often should you do this? A, monthly, B, quarterly, C, every six months, or D, yearly? Thank you for your participation, and those results will come up here shortly. So, Luella, what, what's your take on, on suggestions on how to manage feeling overwhelmed? Well, um, feeling overwhelming uh, tends to happen when we feel like we have to take care of everything all the time. And you have to be uh, realistic with yourself and say, hey, you know, let's take a deep breath for a moment and um, relook at everything. And I would also like to suggest creating a vision board because vision boards, it really motivates and excites you and um, just gives you a real sense of direction and diverts you away from the overwhelming feeling. And um, like me, I tend to be misindependent. And one of my challenges is, is asking for help. So please do not hesitate to ask others for help because for an example, um, I have a team of people all around me that um, when I absolutely finally ask them for help, they be like, you know, I've been waiting for you to ask me. And some have even responded and said, girl, it's a privilege to be a part of what you're doing. So um, don't feel like you have to carry everything on your shoulder. Know that you do have other people out there that will love to be a part of what you're doing so that that will lighten um, the load of overwhelming. And the other suggestion that I like to say is, um, for me, I love to listen to jazz or spiritual music, something to keep me calm down. And I, I feel like that would also benefit whatever um, your passion is. But um, try not to make yourself feel like you have to take care of everything all at once and prioritize uh, the um, time sensitive things because those are the things that really causes the overwhelming feelings that you feel each time. So just remind yourself that um, you are a winner in what you do and you just have to show the world that that's what you are, a winner. Yes, there's nothing like uh, being a winner to take all the stress away, you know, celebrate where you're strong. Absolutely, that's wonderful. Um, so our results are back in from our poll, and it looks like 27% say that they plan, do, check, and adjust on a monthly basis. So ladies, share some strategies on how we can embrace incremental progress. Uh, Luella, we'll start with you. Incremental progress is um, very uh, good to incorporate into your um, plan because 
um, like for me, I have many challenges that I have to work with each day. So um, by me being creative and making these plans out, it helps me to know uh, the strategy of the day of how to incorporate uh, managing and meeting those goals each day. Wonderful. Uh, can you share with us, you know, maybe a goal that you, you may have had and how you broke it down? Well, I actually had a very challenging situation um, that when I was at the Festival of the Sea this year, uh, they wanted me to do a six minute presentation on self publishing, for an example. And in my mind, I thought that was impossible because anyone that know about the literary industry know that that is you wear so many hats in that field. So to try to sum it up in six minutes is really challenging. So um, this is when I had to um, reach out to my team and they um, and I gave them my presentation and they put it in the slide and all the other presenters, they ended up going over the six minute time. And amazingly, I was able to stay within the six minutes. That's wonderful. Uh, our, our next poll question uh, was up and it's how do you focus on small wins? A, create short term as well as long term goals. B, keep a to do list daily of daily accomplishments. Uh, C is punish yourself by not reaching goals fast enough. Or D, don't acknowledge small wins because it will only slow you down. And our results are in. 14% uh, of women say create short term as well as long term goals. Uh, we suggest that you participate in these uh, these polls in, in our chat room, ladies, so that we can uh, count you in the numbers as well. So uh, Megan, tell us, what are some of your strategies on how we can embrace incremental progress? Sure. So the saying goes, you can uh, only eat a, an elephant one bite at a time. So we need to break down, you know, our projects, our goals, things like that, into those those smaller things that we can we can accomplish that we can see. I myself um, have to set those goals, and then also I notice that um, I start to like lose drive and lose fire if I don't set rewards for myself as well. I learned that a long time ago about myself, and so I have to set that up. For myself, I have to set those small, small wins, those goals, and and to celebrate. We have enough negative around us on a re everyday basis. Why not add in some positive? Celebrate our wins, um, and celebrate with people as well. I think that that's really, really important. So if you're like me, you know, celebrate the things that you can see. I like I talk about all the time uh, the ultimate dream. I want to live life on my terms. I want enough time and enough money to live life on my terms, but. Can we really see that? Can I really see that? When I first started out, I couldn't. So I had to break that down into things that I could really see. For example, I could see earning an extra thousand dollars a month to pay off debt. I could see a new couch. I could see helping a friend um, build her business so that she could go on a cruise, things like that. Break that up into incremental goals that you can see today and break it up, you know, add in, you know, one right now. So then, and when you reach that, you know, add in three or four. Or if you're like me, I break up. I have a goal right now. For example, when I when I paid off all my debt, I actually had a goal and I broke it up. I'm going to pay off these many credit cards and then I get to go to Hawaii or not to Hawaii, to California for a vacation. And I had that much money saved up as part of that. Set that up so that you can see those wins and but break, break that up into whatever fits into your your life. Mine was debt. Yours might be um, with your business. It might be with family, whatever would fit into your life. But break that up um, so that you can actually see it. Too many of us set things too big and we can't see it, so we get overwhelmed. Um, it's hard to reach. So, so set that up into incremental goals so that we celebrate that and we can see where we have come from um, rather than just this huge thing that we have to accomplish. Absolutely. You want to dream big, which you definitely want to take small steps to get there. Absolutely. Yep. Luella, um, we all know that the feeling of achievement, um, but sometimes it can be short-lived because we don't know or understand what our next steps need to be. How do we implement a goal-setting strategy that is truly measurable and scalable? 
Well, that's where your vision board also helps you um, because with the vision board, there's also a timeline um, on uh, how, uh, how you, what that each project requires uh, the certain amount of time frame. And then you also um, assign a team to those different um, parts of the plan in order to complete it. Because remember, we can't do everything on our own. So it takes a team for us to accomplish the things that we're trying to set out. Wonderful. Sherry in the chat room, she said, can you describe more about how to set up a vision board? Uh, yes. OK, like um, what I usually use is like Pictionary and um, there's like a big board that you can get like at Michael's or any arts and craft store. And um, like say like for me, for an example, if I wanted to start a literacy program, then I would cut out a picture of that building and then the um, the different parts of what I want in that program will go on your vision board. Um, like say like if I want the certain types of furniture or a certain type of uh, special programs for the children uh, that would be incorporated in your vision board because these are the things that you want to stay in your mind um, all the time and then um, as you working on the vision board, it will actually bring your vision into play and it helps you to organize your thoughts as well as your steps. And then you can make little notations on like where the bathroom is, where the first aid is, what types of books for the programs. Um, then you also think about the teachers that you want, uh, what type of um, programs that you want to cater to the children. Um, like. Um, for an example, if you wanted like uh, children from 14 to 12, then you would have pictures of them doing certain projects together, which I would like to think of more intimate settings because I find that children learn better in small settings. Um, so you would display those type of visions that you have in your plan, for example. Wonderful, good, good stuff. Um, Sarah and uh, Debbie says that Evernote, they love Evernote. And we have some suggestions uh, um, on Pinterest and different ideas too. So we want to yes. make sure that you're engaging in the chat room. And but we also want to make sure that you are participating in our survey. The, the survey that question that just came up was how would you create a growth mindset? A, a was remind yourself that I was born with just so much talent and intelligence. And B is remind myself that talent and intelligence can be developed through hard work, good strategies, and input from others. And 30% said B, which is to remind yourself that, that talent and intelligence can be developed through hard work, good strategies, and input from others. So, um, Megan, tell us what, what, what do you say as far as how to implement goal setting strategy that is truly measurable and scalable? When it comes to goal setting, I, um, I think my, uh, my version of a vision board, I call it a dream board. I'm kind of old school. I've been doing, I, I've been to about dream boards for 15 years and we used to call them dream boards. So when I talk about dream boards, it's vision boards. Um, and there's a really great app just for people that are asking about that, that you can actually get on your phone and it sends you texts and pictures of, of stuff. And I can't think of the name of it. I'll have to get, figure that out and put it on the website. Anyway, um, what I do is I actually have long-term, short-term, medium-term goals. And my long-term goals, I usually have it broken down between the, the three. Um, a lot of uh, people, you know, um, basically, I want to make sure that my dreams are as detailed as possible um, and then make sure that they're measurable um, and to be able to make sure that they're measurable, make sure that we can break them down and, and, and that you can see the progress of them. Again, we've talked about, you know, making sure that you can see progress in what you're doing. Um, they're realistic. Like, I want to run um, a marathon someday. Um, you know, there's a marathon in my town um, next month. 
there's no way I could run that marathon. It's not realistic. I could run it next year. You know, we want to make sure the realistic is, 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 is a part of that, that. And then make sure that it's achievable. It's something that you can actually do. Um, there's no way that I, I play basketball in high school, but there's no way I'm going to be a professional basketball player. Um, my skills just are not there. Making sure that, that we, can, we can fit within that. And then always, always put a time stamp on your on your your uh, your your goals, your vision, um, and your mission, and what you're doing. Uh, if we don't put timestamps on it, we're not focused on it. It it still goes back into that someday realm. Um, and some days are wishes. Um, I joke that the wishes are for Disneyland, and and we live in reality. Disneyland's great to to visit, but we live in reality. Make sure that your dream board and your vision boards are living, breathing things. Dream build constantly. You know, when you're out doing things, make sure you're building that up and then add that in on your regular every day. And then as you're building that, add to that um, and making sure that, that you know where you're going and what you're doing um, and implement those into your priorities and your strategies as you're, you're scheduling. You know, doing those one or two things every single day, like Star said, um, to carry you a little bit further. Um, along your way that, you know, that goes back to that measurable um, thing, you know, make sure it's measurable doing those one or two things every day that compound over time that'll get you to where you're going. So, so Megan, Helen says, yep, I had the same short term, long term, midterm goals for a year now. What advice would you give to her? Has she planned, do, check, and adjust? Go back to that first panel question. What's your plan, do, check, and adjust? What have you adjusted to, if you've had the same goals and you're not getting to where you're, you want to go, um, we need to adjust something. We need to adjust the direction and when you're, and where you're going. Um, what, what are, where are you going? I don't know the details of a particular situation, but that's where I would recommend that she does. She needs to go back. If we're doing something, but it's not getting to where we're, we need to go, then we need to, to figure out what we've done, evaluate that, make adjustments, and try again. If that's not working and getting us where we want to go, do it again. Um, and to get us a little bit further. But I'm going to guess that that's where she needs to go is the plan, do, check, and adjust what she is doing um, to get us a little further. I would love to talk to her about what's going on. She's more than willing to, to email me. We can talk about that further. But I'm going to guess that she needs to plan, do, check, and then adjust where she's going. If she's had the same plans for a year, we need to make some adjustments. Or she's not detailed enough and not working on the things the prerequisites essentially to get to where she's going. There's there's usually some prerequisites that need to happen before you can get to the big things. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, Luella, what would you say to Wendy who said, I find it very difficult to keep track of where I left off and what I had set aside to accomplish the next day? Um, what I find that would be helpful is to carry a note with you and then uh, use your reminders in your cell phone uh, that can help trigger some of the things that you want to be mindful of. Um, and then also uh, try to do some fun stuff with that uh, that, that causes you to remember uh, the projects that you wanted to go back to. Wonderful. All right, so as we prepare for our, our first fourth poll question. Uh, Luella, what would you say is how would you define catalysts and nourishers and what value do they have to support and propel your progress? Well, you know, this is just keeping it real that in business there's some bitter and sweet moments. But what we have to analyze with that bitter side is that that's the best side of uh, the growth process because those bitter moments is really there to take you higher and make you stronger and wiser. Now, what tends to happen with the bitter times of um, our development, uh, that's where some people get lost in their dreams and give up on their dreams. So if we can just know that that those negative times is not there to defeat you, but to really build you and to take you to the winning line. So um, the thing is, is that uh, I know like for instance, um, people speak a lot about haterism when they're developing their business and how they encounter some negativity. But then many times we have to reprocess that thought because a lot of times people are admiring you and wish they could be as courageous and 
um, adventurous as you are. And then, um, and as you continue to show them that through all the strife and the different things that we go through uh, in developing our business, then the next thing you know, the person that was trying to bring you down start also being the table or the footstep that brings you up. So um, just be strong in what you do and know that you're good at what you're doing. And don't be discouraged when those bitter times come because you are the best at what you do. That's why you do it. And you have That's to remind right. yourself of that. Yes. Make sure that you are filling in the poll question. That is, make sure you know that you are good at what you do. Yes. Uh, our, our poll question says, health and wellness is not only a $1.7 trillion trend, but it also, it's also a great way to reduce stress and improve well-being. Uh, what do you say, what do you do to stay healthy? Um, a is eat healthy. B is exercise three to four times a week. C is meditate, D is supplement, and E is other. And the results are in, and it looks like B, which is exercise three to four times a week, came in with 17%, and A, which is eat healthy, came in at 15%. So what's your take, um, Megan? How, how can you define catalysts and, and, and nourishers and, and what value do they have to support and propel your progress? So there are things in our life that literally fire us, propel us forward, catalyst, catapult us forward. Um, I like to say you need to find that dream that literally lights your soul on fire, um, is my famous saying. Um, and, but there are also just like, just like has already been had been mentioned, there's those there's those things that literally tear us down and make us discouraged and wonder, you know, wonder why are we doing this and are we really going to make it? Um, we need those nourishers to 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 give us to give us that strength and to and to push forward and we find those in many different ways i personally found mine in my different mentors i've had so many different mentors in my life everything from my my mother who has been a lifelong mentor um even to this day all the way to you know some business partners that i've had for 15 years to to ones that i've, I've just recently recently uh, met in the last year and it is they they all have had different different meetings in our lives some of them stay for a long time as you can see and some of them just stay for a season just to teach us a lesson but those are the people that come into our lives um, the mentors are important to me because those are the ones that have, have walked the road before those are the ones that that, have, that you can go and, and you can talk to and, and and like I can go and say oh my gosh this is the challenge I'm having and and I don't understand and a lot of the times they will laugh and say yep I remember when I went through that uh, and and they can they can help direct you and and and, and put you on, a, on on the path that you need to go or give you advice that you might need and that's why it's so important I think it's very important for you to have a mentor and if you talk to anybody that's been successful they'll tell you that you need to network you need to get those mentors for that purpose um, I'm so blessed that now that I get to be mentors and be able to and I, and I get to hear those things and then they'll say yeah I've, I've been there I remember doing that hey you know take this path instead because if you go this way you know this is what happened to me and you get to kind of do some directioning there but but those nourishers are so very important in your in your life because the when you hit the overwhelm that we've already talked about you can you can go to them and, and kind of vent and get that release and they can help you know you know direct you in different ways but but find your nurture you know for some people it might be you know uh, some time out for yourself each week for a long bath and, and a movie or or a glass of wine or whatever it might be find those nourishers for mine it's my mentors well well reba said you definitely need a mentor but sherry says sure. it's difficult to find a good mentor uh what what feedback would you give her um, to keep looking, keep net networking and find one. It is difficult to find a good mentor, somebody that truly has your best benefit in, in mind. I truly believe there's enough room for all of us at the top. You need to, to, to keep looking. There are really amazing, amazing people out there, amazing mentors. I reach out. I've talked to so many of you guys um, as I different visit the different chapters. There are amazing women just here within our group, um, and you have amazing opportunities right here they might not be in your exact industry but they're professional women who have been through 
a lot and they can help you in that aspect. So reach out and talk to people here. We've got an amazing messaging network here on the site that I don't think a lot of people know about. Um, I message people all the time and they're like, oh, I didn't even know that this existed. Check that out and, and talk to people, but continue to look for one. And it doesn't have to be within your industry. Just somebody that has ran the roads and been successful um, can make a huge difference. Somebody that knows what it's like to be a professional woman maybe or a, 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 a mother or whatever you, you need that backup in, look for somebody. You might take three or four to get the full that you need, but continue to look for one. They're out there. Wonderful. Wonderful. And when you're talking about the catalyst, um, you know, I thought about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and all the stuff that he went through. And, mm -hmm. and you know, there's always a Santa Claus that's watching. And when it's your proper time to glow up, you know, when, when it's really needed, then all those things will come together. But you definitely have to go through the grind. Um, definitely. For everything to come together, right? So, definitely. you know, Megan, there, there is a, certainly a type of mindset that enables someone to reach their goal. What do sure. you think some of the key elements are for a winning mindset? Oh, there's so many little, there's so much to, to, to that, but I think that it comes down to five different things. The first would be a hunger to learn, um, to continue on with that continuing education. This, this uh, platform here is such a wonderful aspect for that, to continue learning. Um, I, was, I, I was told once that, that once you stop learning, um, so does success, because everything evolves, everything changes, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go back to school. You know, you can pick up podcasts um, on your commute. You know, think about, you know, if you if you listen to a podcast, you know, add 15 minutes um, to, to an hour of caught podcasts a day. You know, think of what you could pick up in a year's worth of time. Add a, add a book, you know, you know, change, add a, we talk about the recommended books here on these on these uh, every month. And think about if you picked up one of those, a book a month, just think, think of 12 books a year. The average American doesn't even get through one book a year. If we added 12 books a year to our library, and they're good, uplifting, personal development, family books, business development, whatever you need in your life. Imagine the education that you would have within within your 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 power at that point in time. Um, I also think that thinking outside of the box is huge. A lot of times we get stuck in this little box and we don't get outside of it. And the solution that we need is actually outside of that box. And everything's shifting and trends are shifting. Uh, social media has shifted everything from the old business world. And we've got to think outside the box in order to to change and to and to develop um, having a mentor is another huge one we just got to, got through that um, and having consistency consistency to push forward because there's going to be times where you're going to do something every single day and you're not going to see progress at all but um, ultimately it's going to come down to that consistency and one day it's going to be it's all going to pay off it's like the lily pad if you don't know the story of the lily pad look it up I don't have time to go over it but look up the story of the lily pad it's so vital and then always remember that sometimes going after your dreams means losing your mind um, that's a saying that you see all the time but ultimately it's sometimes you feel like you're losing your mind because you're just going and grinding and just doing and doing and doing and doing you're not seeing results but you know you're doing it um, I promise you I promise you that it is worth it I promise you putting in the effort now and making it making it happen now is so worth it the dark times come before the light comes and make sure you just keep going and keep doing it because it is so so worth it it is awesome feedback. Luella, tell us what what are the key elements for a winning mindset? A winning mind takes that you really have to believe in yourself. You know, when everybody else don't believe in yourself or your vision or or your business, you still believe in it. And don't never stop, um, give up on your determination and stay motivated, you know, and also surround yourself with positive people and people that um, can nurture you, which means that you learning things like um, one of the, the greatest blessings of NAPW is the different 
different chapters that they always have somewhere for you to go to learn, network. Um, and that's where you're going to find a lot of your solutions and your answers and the connections that you need. And, and that's going to lead you to the winning line because we're this, this whole business is built on winning people, winning women. So um, professional women um, that is out to win and to, to contribute something positive to co the community as well as to the global universe. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Jean made a, a great uh, comment. She says, I agree, consistency is so, Im so very important. Yes. Megan, tell us why consistency is so important. A lot of times when we're working, uh, the results is going to show up 90 days after we do it. Um, or sometimes, depending on what industry you're in. In my industry, it's 90 days after we do it. If we're working and we do it, say, for 30 days, and we don't see the results for 90 days, then um, we stop. And then we'll see results in 90 days, and we start up again. And then we don't see results, and so we stop. And we go in these chunks, and we can never get momentum built. If we continue on consistency, no matter what, then we eventually will hit what call, what's called critical mass or momentum, and it will finally start to build and grow and make it happen. But we've got to make it through that dark time, that consistency where we're not seeing anything, but we're building and we're going through the grind of the every day of the building. Um, and then it, once it hits that critical mass, it's like, oh my goodness. Uh, Napoleon Hill says when success comes, it comes so fast that we wonder where it was, where it was when, when nothing happened. It's the same, it's the same concept. You now, it's going to come so fast eventually, but you got to hit the consistency and stay consistent or you're never going to hit momentum. You're never going to hit that critical mass moment um, because it takes the consistency because it builds. It's the compounding of everything. Wonderful. What's your take on consistency, Luella? Um, that that is so imperative because um, it can make you or break you, you know, even for the business. If you don't have consistency with your business, your customers will fade away. So consistency is imperative. Yes. Uh, if you all remember the movie, The Shawshank Redemption, they literally dug and dug and dug little pieces daily to get through to be able to escape the prison in which they were in. And because if you feel like you are not obtaining your goals and things are not working for you, it's really because you have stopped digging. You stop. But if you keep on going, you know, if you say if my hammer breaks, I'm going to use a, a, a pen. If my pen breaks, I'm going to use, my, I'm going to gnaw my way out. I'm going to, you know, it's how bad do you want it? And consistency tells you what your answer is. Because if you're not consistent, then you're saying, I really don't want it, right? right. So, how big is your dream? How big is your dream? But, but we say that, don't we? Yep. We say that. What are, what are a few tips that you would give to our ladies that, to demonstrate for them how, how big their dream really is based on action? Like, you know how big your dream is based on your action. Um, I've always been, when, uh, the, the saying I like is, is if your dream doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. Um, and another, a, a great analogy is, is, um, if your dream is, dream is not bigger than the obstacle in front of you, then it's not, big, it's, it's not big enough. And that'll help, you know, it, it's gotta be bigger than what you're, what you're working on. And so you've got to keep that in front of you, a vision board or a dream board, I, my entire bedroom wall, I'm going to wrap myself out here. My entire bedroom wall is my dream board. I have got pictures of everything I want to accomplish. My dream board, you know, Steve Harvey is a great one. He's got he's got a video out there on YouTube um, from one of his segments about, you know, building your dream board or your, your vision board to 500 items you want to accomplish before um, before the end of your life. Um, and I took that challenge. I have 500 things on my on my bedroom wall. There's pictures and descriptions and things like that that I want to accomplish. It's all over. It's in my face every single day. I wake up to it. I go to bed to it. You need to keep that right in front of you. So you want it. It's that burning desire. It's everything that you see. Even if it's just one thing that you want that bad. Do you know the details of it? 
Like, for example, a car that you want. Tesla just came out with a car that I'm dying for. Am I going to be able to buy it yet? No, but I'm dying for it. I know it can go 310 miles on a single charge. It can go 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds. Um, it, you know, I can tell you everything, but it's beating out, it's beating out the all kinds of things. I, you know, do you know, how, how well do you know your dreams? That, that, that's the question. How well do you know where you're going? It's like, like was said about the vision board. Do you know the details? Do you know where your bathroom's going to go? If you want a dream house, do you know where your bathroom's going to go? What's your kitchen going to look like? What's your, what, what kind of, kind of range do you want in it? Um, how is it going to affect your family? If you build this house, you know, are each kid's going to have their own bedroom? Are they going to share? Is there going to be a playroom? Is there going to be a media room? You know, all of these details, do you know that? Because those are the details that are going to keep you consistent because you put those right in front of you. And if you talk about that, and if you look at that before you have to go do something that you're dreading like I have to go and talk to people I hate talking to, to people I hate contacting people this is the worst thing in my entire life but that's part of business that's part of business right and so I put that in front of myself and I go through okay my next dream my next dream is to get married I know I, I'm engaged I'm going to get married um, a lot of people don't know that um, I want my dream wedding I want my dream wedding on a beach but a lot of my family can't afford to go to a beach. So my dream wedding is to be able to go to a beach and be able to afford to pay my immediate family to go to the beach. And so I put that in front of me, the wedding dress, the hotel, the beach, the pictures, things like that. Put that in front of you. Know where you're going because that is what's going to push you over that ledge. That's what's going to keep you going and move you on to the next thing. That's good stuff. I mean, did you all feel her? Like she didn't just come up with that. She's been living this thing, right? <laughs> and, and you felt her passion and you felt her energy. Um, one one uh, identifier of if you're living out loud, living your dream, if your dream is alive, is that type of energy when you talk about it. But she said something, Luella. She said, you know, it's, uh, it's in the details, Jean says. Um, in the chat room and she was saying yeah. very detailed yeah. about her dreams or her dress and everything like that um, How else are you going to know what it looks like that you're dreaming about if you don't know what it looks like? Tell us how important the details are Luella the details are very important because um, that way it helps you to know what you're aiming for and um, you have to be precise and even if it seems like it's out of your reach, anything is possible in life. So um, don't dream small, dream big. And if your dream is not keeping you woke at night, you ain't dreaming big enough. So um, you just have to just believe the impossible because it is very possible. I'm a living witness of it. I'm living my dream every day. So it is possible. And did you have this dream for very long as a child? How did this dream develop? Talk to, to those women who, you know, are, are feeling like giving up on their dream. Well, in the beginning, I had no idea that I was a writer. You know, I just knew that I loved to write. And then I met a professor at San Francisco State University, um, and I happened to let him see some of my writing. And he was the one that defined that um, I'm a natural born writer. And then so that's when I started publishing. And then every book that I would publish became an award winning book. And they wasn't just winning one award, they was winning numerous awards. And then that started defining my life. And then so um, I started, so I asked the professor, I said, well, do you think I need to go to school and to perfect this? He said, no, because you're a natural born um, writer. So that would, and you have a certain kind of flavor to what you do. So, um, and that's another thing. If you're very gifted at something, you roll with it. You run with it until the wheels fall off. And I guarantee you when those wheels fall off, some new ones will appear without you looking for it. That's just how powerful your dream is. See, the thing is, is that we think a lot of times we're in control, but there's something that's greater than us that's in control that brings everything together for us. If we're willing to walk the line and go through all the different challenges that we must go through to show life that we really want it. That's what it's really all about. It's not that you can't achieve it. It's already there waiting for you. So as long as you don't give up and hang in there and go through the grind, I guarantee you're going to be shouting a victory all throughout this internet, on TV, and you're going to be doing a video for us someday. 
That is wonderful, wonderful. Tammy says, welcome changes to your goals. They will grow with you. That's some really good uh, yes. feedback. Jean said, oh, yes, my true dream didn't start until I was 60, right? Some people get it right away. Some people get it when they're 60. And you know why that happens? It's because everyone needs to be encouraged along the way. Yes. So if everyone yes. got it at five, then what about the people who don't get it at 12? There's someone at 12 to say, hey, I got it at 12. And we That's have right. someone to say, I got it like Jean at 60. So Gina says, amen, <laughs> you know? So um, as we are winding down and, and before we wrap up our panel discussion and get on to our pick uh, for our book, um, what's one takeaway that you would leave with the women about understanding how to leverage small wins and reach your goals? We talked about a lot of things today that, that people don't ne necessarily take into consideration, like keeping your vision before you. You know, how are you going to have faith for something that you can't see? Being consistent, you know, um, sticking to it, all of the, the wonderful things that we've discussed today. Uh, what is one takeaway? Like, if, if you don't apply anything else today, uh, what would you say is the one thing that these women can walk away with? We'll go with you, Megan. <laughs> I was going to say, which one do you want us to go for? Uh, the biggest thing to walk away with is know your why and set your priorities to that why and do one thing every single day to get you there. It's never too late to start and to do that one thing every day to get you there. Build that dream board, know that why, that driving power, and do one thing every day to get you there. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait till you're ready. Think you're, you're ready. Start today. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait till you're ready. I love it. <laughs> And what about you, Louis? I would say just keep yourself on fire. Keep yourself motivated. Stay around motivated people and just believe you just never give up and just stay around positive people because they will make a world of difference on your worst day. Um, and, and it would give you so much encouragement and um, leverages is all around us. From the day that you was born all the way up into now, if you look back over your life, you'll be like, oh, this job and this class and these different opportunities has built me for this present time such as this right now. So just continue to stay motivated and excited about your future because I know you're going to be phenomenal. Yes, you are. Well, our recommended read, because you got to feed your mind to have that winning mindset. Megan McFall's book recommendation is The Compound Effect, Jumpstart Your Income, Your Life, Your Success by Darren Hardy. Darren Hardy provides the fundamental principles that have guided the most phenomenal achievements in business, relationships, and beyond. This step-by-step -step operating system allows you to multiply your success, chart your progress, and achieve any desire. And Luella Hill. Dudley's recommendation is Until Today by Ian La Van Zandt. Until Today presents a book of devotion for anyone on the path to spiritual empowerment. These daily devotions will create powerful changes in the circumstances of your life that have held you back and will place you on a road to personal strength and peace of mind. And although Stephanie was not here, she did send her recommended book, which is The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. For women who are considering a change or wanting to develop or maintain a positive, fulfilling life by harnessing this new science, we can transform our business, our communities, and our lives. Thank you, ladies, great choices. And thank you, Star, for sharing your great advice today. Remember, ladies, at each of our live only eChapter events, our VIP members who register early have the opportunity to either win a three minute spotlight or submit a question. Our next live event will be November 1st at 12 p.m. Eastern. You should have seen on your screen ability to register for that event 
and now on screen today's rerun on September September 18th at 12 p.m. Eastern also. So you can catch the rerun of today's episode on September 18th at 12 p.m. Eastern. It doesn't matter if it's live or a rerun. We always have a live chat room so you can expand your networking opportunities. Also, thank you to the 300 plus members who attended the event today. If any of our attendees have further questions for our speakers, please feel free to reach out to them. Their information is on the PowerPoint, which is available for you to download now on your screen below in the video pod. You will also be receiving a post e-chapter email with today's attendee list so you can, can connect again on NAPW.com and connect to network. All NAPW e-chapters are recorded and saved on the YouTube NAPW e-chapter channel for you to watch and share with your colleagues, friends, and family. Also, an FYI that we are having two upcoming power networking events hosted by NAPW in Chicago on October 10th and Los Angeles on November 17th. The links to register will be put into the chat feed now. We hope to see you there. Also, ladies, if you have any questions regarding your membership, including your benefits, how to navigate the website, upgrades and renewals, or any upcoming events in person or online, please see the emails listed now on the PowerPoint deck for you to reach out and have your questions answered. And finally, post each chapter, here are three things you should do to continue putting your NAPW membership to work. Connect with at least three members, post each chapter. The attendance list is coming your way, post each chapter. Make sure you're signed up for the next e-chapter or e-coaching event. And don't forget to take the post e-chapter survey. Your feedback is very important to us and assist us in enhancing your member experience. Thank you everyone for another great e-chapter event and we look forward to seeing you next time. Enjoy the rest of your day.